In this video, I will demonstrate how to install PowerShoot Network Shutdown on a Windows operating system. I have previously downloaded PowerShoot Network Shutdown from apc.com and I must first uncompress the installation files. Once uncompressed, I'll open the installation folder and double click on setup.exe to launch the installer. In this window, I will click Next to activate the installation wizard. In this window, I see the license agreement. I must accept the terms of the agreement by clicking I agree to continue. In this window, I will configure the Java runtime environment. My options are use a public JRE installed on the system or use a private JRE bundled with PowerShoot. I'm given the option to select the public JRE since there is a compatible JRE pre-installed on my system. If there was not a compatible JRE pre-installed on my system, use the public JRE installed would be grayed out and my only option would be to install the bundled JRE. PowerShoot is a Java application and there must be a compatible JRE installed on the system for PowerShoot to run. I will select use the public JRE and continue by clicking next. With the release of PowerShoot Network Shutdown version 4.2, I'm given the option of enabling SNMP support. If I were to select Enable SNMP support, I would be given the option of selecting the port that SNMP would use. Also, in the PowerShoot Network Shutdown web interface, I would be given the option of configuring for SNMP v1 or SNMP v3. I will not be enabling SNMP support for this demonstration and will click Next to continue. In this window, I'm given the option to configure for VMware support. My options are Enable VMware support, Do not enable VMware support. If I select Enable VMware support later when I run the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Configuration Wizard, I will be offered the option to shut down a single VMware host or work with VMware vCenter Server to shut down multiple VMware hosts. I will produce a video at a later date where I will install for VMware support. For this video, I will select Do Not Enable VMware Support and click Next. In this window, I am asked to choose the installation location for PowerShoot Network Shutdown. I will select the default path of C, Program Files, APC, PowerShoot and click Next. In this window, I see that PowerShoot Network Shutdown is now ready to be installed. I will click Install to proceed. I now see a pop-up window asking if I would like to open TCP slash UDP ports in the firewall. PowerShoot requires TCP ports 80 and 6547 to be open to allow access to the user interface. It also requires UDP port 3052 to be open. UDP port 3052 is used for communications between the network management card and PowerShoot. I will click yes in this window. I now see that PowerShoot network shutdown has been successfully installed, however configuration is required. I will click the finish button which will launch my default web browser. I'll be required to accept a security certificate which will then launch the PowerShoot Network Shutdown Configuration Wizard. When my default browser launches, I see that the connection is not private. This is due to the fact that PowerShoot Network Shutdown creates a security certificate using my system's fully qualified domain name. The browser does not recognize this, so it warns me. I must click Advanced and then click Proceed to open the Configuration Wizard. When the Configuration Wizard launches, I see that I will need to enter details for the Network Management Card and the UPS. To enter this information, I click Next. In this window, I am asked to select either IPv4 or IPv6 as the communications method. If you would like more information on IPv4 and IPv6, you can get that information from reading the PowerShoot Network Shutdown User's Guide or 
by clicking on the help file. Here you'll see information discussing IPv4 and IPv6. I will select IPv4 and click Next to continue. Since my system has multiple IP addresses, I'm asked which one I would like to register with a network management card. If my system did not have multiple IP addresses, this window would not appear. For this demonstration, I'm going to select my 10.173 address and click Next. In this window, I'm given the options of selecting a single, redundant, parallel, or advanced UPS configurations. For more information on single, redundant, parallel, or advanced UPS configurations, again, you can see the PowerShoot Network Shutdown User's Guide. Click on the Help Files, or click on the I, and information will appear describing that particular configuration. I will select Single UPS Configuration for this demonstration and click Next. In this window, I will enter the username and password used to access PowerShoot Network Shutdown and the authentication phrase used for communications between PowerShoot Network Shutdown and the Network Management Card. The username used to access PowerShoot Network Shutdown must match the username PowerShoot will use for communications with the Network Management Card. To find the required username that PowerShoot must use, open the web interface to the Network Management Card and log in. Under Configuration, Shutdown, if I scroll down, I will see the username that PowerShoot must use for communications. In this example, the username I must enter is going to be PCNS. So back here in the PowerShoot Network Shutdown interface, I will enter PCNS as the username. The password is unique to PowerShoot Network Shutdown. It does not need to match the password used to access the network management card. The authentication phrase must match the authentication phrase used for communications with the network management card. I know that the authentication phrase being used by the network management card is the default authentication phrase of admin user phrase that has been pre-inserted for me, so I will leave that section alone and click Next to continue. In this window, I will enter the IP address of the network management card that I want PowerShoot Network Shutdown to communicate with. I'm also given the options of using HTTP or HTTPS as my communications method. For this demonstration, I will just use HTTP and I will enter the IP address. And click Next. I'll now click Apply since I've reviewed all of this information and it is correct. PowerShoot will now attempt to communicate with the network management card. Now that PowerShoot has successfully registered and is communicating with the network management card, I will click Next to continue. I'm now given the option to select an outlet group that PowerShoot will be using. If your UPS does not have switched outlet groups, you will not see this window. My UPS has three outlet groups. Therefore, I will select outlet group number one since that's the outlet group that my system is plugged into and click Apply. In this window, I'm given the options of Do Not Turn Off the UPS, Turn Off the UPS, Turn Off the UPS Outlet Group. The reason for this is, if you would like your system to start automatically after a power failure, the UPS must first cut power to the outlet group before the system will restart. The system restart is set in the system BIOS. We have a K-Base on that if you'd like some further information. I will select Turn Off the UPS. This way, when power is restored, the UPS will turn itself back on and then restore power to all of the outlet groups. And click Next. I'll now click Finish, which will launch me into the PowerShoot Network Shutdown web interface. I will produce a video at a later date that will discuss each of these web interface menu options. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful.